Please be aware that the comments, views, opinions shared on this podcast are not meant to diagnose a medical problem and or legal problem. If you do have a medical problem or legal problem, kindly contact a professional. Welcome to An Apple a Day, a podcast, a resource, a community. Share your experiences and learn from others as we overcome barriers and learn to live a happy, healthy life with a disability. Welcome to the community. Here's your host, Jimmy Apple. You remember that day like it was yesterday. You woke up, you went out to the kitchen, you poured yourself a cup of coffee, stepped out on the back deck, you looked up at the sun coming up, nice cool breeze in the air. Not so cold that you had to wear a jacket or anything, but a cool breeze, a spring breeze. And it's just so quiet, just nice. You go back inside, you put the cup down, you go inside, you go up to the bathroom, you take a shower. You come out, you get dressed. By that time, your wife, your kids are down at the breakfast table. They're eating breakfast. You come down, a little chit-chat. You kiss your wife goodbye, kiss the kids goodbye. Go outside, you start up your car, let it warm up for a second. You turn on the radio, and there's that song. That song from when you were 17, you put the car in gear, you're pulling out, and you you can picture yourself back being 17 years old again, and you're driving down the block. Everything is good. The sun's up, nice breeze, no need for an air conditioner. You open the windows, the smell of spring is hitting you. It's great. You get to work. You park, you go upstairs, you see the boss, the boss tells you, you have to take some paperwork over to the South Warehouse, and then from the South Warehouse, you have to go up and hit the main office and give me a call from there. You're like, okay, that's cool. Go back down, you take your paperwork, get in your car, stop at the corner, get a cup of coffee from the deli, and you go to the South Warehouse, you drop off your paperwork, you talk to the people that are there for a while, catch up on <laughs> what happened yesterday. You leave, you head off to the main office, you Driving up the block, you come to a stop sign, you adjust the radio, pull through, and you keep going. You come to that first traffic light, you're looking around, and you're still thinking to yourself, wow, it's beautiful out today. And you have that kind of calm peace over you. Like, nothing can go wrong. Light turns green, you pull out, you start on your way, and a guy comes roaring through the through the intersection and T-bones you. Your car is spinning now. You're bouncing off of poles, off of parked cars. Everything's going black. It's you can't feel anything anymore. You can't hear anything, and all of a sudden it screeches, comes to a halt. You can smell gasoline. You can smell oil. You can smell burnt rubber, but you don't hear anything. And you're in the car, and everything's dark. You can't see anything, and you're trying to listen. You hear nobody talking. You're calling out, going hello, hello. Still nobody hears you. And it probably a minute went by, but you feel like it's an hour. And suddenly you hear this noise. It sounds, it's a motor starting. It's not as big as a car or a truck. It sounds like a small motorcycle. And then you start hearing metal moving. You know, that crunch of the metal. And you're hearing glass break and hitting down like like pebbles dropping off the top of a mountain. It's it's coming down all around you. You can hear this. And it's a horrible noise. Now you start to see a little peak of light coming through. And you're trying to look through, but you're blinded by that little peak of light. And slowly but surely, there's more light coming in. The more light that comes in, the more you're blinded. All you can see is this white light, and you're thinking, did I die? Louder, the motor gets louder, and all of a sudden, you hear a din. You know, people talking, but you can't understand what they're saying. And you're looking, and you can't see anybody. That light is still blinding you. And then, all of a sudden, you start start focusing, and you're starting to see some people, but you see a lot of red when you realize it's you that's bleeding and the blood's coming down into your eyes. And you look down and you're trying to see your legs, but you can't see them. All you can see is the the crumpled mess of the car. And your hands, you can see your hands, but your hands are bleeding. And they've gone through the dashboard. You're pulling them out like you're pulling your hands out of a speaker hole. And everything's blood. And now you can hear people going, are you all right, sir? Are you all right? And you're trying to answer, but nothing's coming out of your mouth. You can't, you can't say anything. You can taste the blood now in your mouth. And you're scared. Finally, someone, someone's reaching in. You see this glove reaching in, and you're trying to focus through the bright light. And now you're starting to notice that there's firemen outside. And as they make the hole bigger that they're, they're using these jaws of life on, now you see there's a fire truck, and you see that there's a, an ambulance, and you see people standing around, and they're all looking the firemen keep on asking you, are you okay, sir? 
Are you okay? Can you can you feel my hands? And you know, you're trying to see if you can feel. You you don't know what you're doing now. You you want me to feel your hands? I can't feel your hands. I can't feel anything. And the more you try to talk, the more you can't. Finally, they break it open enough that they're able to free you. And all you can see on the ground is gas and oil and now blood. And the blood's coming from you. They put you on a backboard. They put a brace around your neck. They put you on the gurney and they're wheeling you over to the ambulance. And they let you sit there for a second. And you still, you're mesmerized. You have no idea what's going on. You, you don't know where you are. You don't know what happened. Then this ambulance worker comes over and says, Sir, we want to take your, uh, your vitals. And you're going to feel a little pinch. We're going to put an IV into you. All those words, they, they mean nothing to you. They're doing it. You feel a little pinch, big deal. Next thing you know, they're, they're slapping a mask over your face. They're lifting you up, and they're putting you in, they're loading you into the back of this ambulance. Next thing you know, some, some fella comes in, and he's in there with a, with a clipboard, and they shut the door, and someone else is in there with you, and they're doing tests and, you know, poking and prodding at you. And you're trying to say, what's going on? But the only thing now you can think about is my wife. My wife, my kids, you know, where are they? And the first thing you get out is, please, can, can where's my wife? And they're saying, sir, we're going to call them when we get to the hospital. The hospital? Why are we going to the hospital? You don't know what's going on yet. All you know is you're not really feeling anything. The only thing that you actually are moving is your head and your lips and your mouth. And you, you, you're not even getting that much out of that. You get to the hospital, the doors fly open, they're bringing you in. These people that were on the ambulance, with you, now they're speaking Greek. You don't understand a word that they're saying. They're giving them all the vital, all, all your vital signs and anything that's wrong with you and going on and on and on. Next thing you know, you're in a room and they've got a bright light over you. They're looking down at you and all you can see is heads, heads with masks and, and hats and you're in the emergency room. They keep on saying, sir, are you okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And you're, saying, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I can hear you, but what are we doing here? What's going on? Hi, my name is Jimmy Apple, and you're listening to An Apple a Day. You know, the pain that comes along with becoming disabled can be tremendous, and thank God we have doctors and medication to help us through that pain. But the mental stress, the mental pain that comes with being disabled sometimes can feel insurmountable. When someone becomes disabled, they're suffering a loss. Whether it could, it could be loss of a job, it could be, God forbid, loss of a leg or eyesight, the ability to hear, uh, loss of a hand or an arm. There's a loss, and they're gonna, people are going to grieve that loss, much like they would grieve the loss of a loved one or, or, or a friend or a treasured pet. It's a loss. It's a loss. And the only way you can actually know what I'm talking about is to go through it. You know, the, the people don't realize that there's stages of, of, of grief for that loss. There's actually five stages of grief. And they are, number one is denial and isolation. Number two is anger. Number three is bargaining. Number four is depression. And number five is acceptance. Now, not everybody grieves in that order. It, it, it's not written in stone that that's the order it has to be in. Everyone grieves differently. And they grieve for different amounts of time. And you have to let them. So let's take a look at these five stages. Number one is denial and isolation. The first reaction to becoming disabled is to deny the reality of the situation. They might say, this didn't happen to me. This is only temporary. This can't happen. It's a normal reaction to try and rationalize the overwhelming concerns and emotions that they're they're experiencing. They try to block out the reality of the situation. This is only temporary, though. It's a reaction that will help them get through till reality actually sets in. Number two, anger. As denial and isolation begin to fade and reality begins to set in, along with its pain, it's evident that they're not ready. They deflect this intense emotion and pain and redirect it and, and displays it rather as anger. This might be directed at strangers, friends, family, even in inanimate objects. If the accident happened at work, they may blame the boss, co-workers, clients, even the building, anything. At some point, they may even feel guilty about this feeling of anger, and that will most probably only serve to make them more angry. Number three, bargaining. The normal reaction to being vulnerable and feeling like you lo you've lost control is to try and regain it. Now, if the disability is due to an illness, they might say, 
if I had only went to the doctor sooner or if I had gotten a second opinion, if, if they were hurt on the job. I didn't feel good that day and I should have stayed home or I should have asked for help. If it was due to a car accident, I should have waited till the rain stopped or I should have taken that other route and so on. Secretly, they may even make a deal with God to avoid the inevitable. This is just another line of defense to try and protect themselves from reality of their situation. Now, number four is depression. This is, a, this is their reaction to the practical implications of their disability. They may worry about the cost of the hospital, the doctors, the medication, the prescriptions, and such, as well as household expenses like the mortgage, rent, the electric bill, kids' tuition, car payments, insurance, taxes, and so on. They worry about all who depend on them. Reassurance will help them through this stage. Number five, acceptance. They may never reach this stage because they may never be able to see beyond their anger and denial. Eventually, they might come to terms with, with it, but, that, but never fully. They'll never fully accept it. If, he, if they ever do, this would be a gift. Keep in mind, though, if they don't accept it, there's no one, no one who can force them to accept it. Coming to terms with this change in their life is a deeply personal experience. There's no one who can help them go through it more easily. You'll never understand completely the emotions that they feel feeling they're going through. The best thing you could probably do is be a, a non-judgmental ear for them to sound off to. You can also lend, lend them some comfort through the process. Let, let them grieve. Trying to divert their feelings make them focus on things that will only serve to extend the healing process. Always remember, things can always be worse. Just take the time to look around. Sometimes, somewhere, you're, you're probably going to run across a person who is going to wish that they had your problems because to them, your problems don't seem as bad as theirs. All right, let's take a little bit of a break here and we'll be back in 30 seconds. An Apple a Day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. Famousapple.com is the home site for this podcast. There you're going to find articles about the topics we discuss. You're going to find our connections to our Facebook page. And you're even going to find connections to our private chat board. So take a minute. Go over. Visit www.famousapple.com. But please wait till the end of this podcast. Don't run out on me now. Let's get back to the discussion. Welcome back. All right. Well, there you have it. Those are the five steps of grief and loss that just about everybody who's permanently disabled go through. Some take longer. Some get through them real quick. But the one thing I will ask those who are around us, family, friends, caretakers, please, please let the person grieve. Let them go through the five steps. There's no there's no set time to do it. There's There's... No one says it's going to be done in a week. You never know, though. It may be done in a day. But it's up to the person, the disabled person. Let them get used to it. Their whole life has changed. And if you don't believe that's a loss, believe me, it is. Well, thanks a lot for listening to the podcast today. I'd like to ask you, please, to subscribe to this podcast and visit www.famousapple.com. Okay, thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to An Apple a Day with Jimmy Apple, your gateway to a happy, healthy life. Join our community at www.famousapple.com. See you next time.